brand of something these days if you have a look around you'll find a comparative brand mm -hmm. so often with say um a dow agro sciences product in a way you're paying for the name mm -hmm. so if you have a look around you can usually find the same thing made by another company under a different name that'll be cheaper um so the one i know is graze on extra mm -hmm. um and it does have a residual effect so you know if you can treat an area you will get some um you know it'll inhibit any regrowth mm. the downside of that obviously is that works on everything not just the mother and million so you have these patches of ground that won't grow anything right for how long well for years really potentially there okay. um, mm. that really has a lot to do with with breakdown you know all of these things are biodegradable to a point mm. Um, so the weather, leaching, depending on how much rain you get and how much it, it leaches it out of the soil that you've treated. Um, there's, there's not really a lot of valuable vegetation on the ground here, but there's plenty of mid-storey and plenty of potential for things to cover back over the areas that are infested if you could get them cleaned up. Mm -hmm. And competition is your best defence against all these sorts of things. If you can get some kind of ground cover there, it's competing whereas this this stuff's just more or less got open slather here at the moment it's got all the room it needs all the bare ground it needs to, to infest it'll just end up all through here yeah. Yeah. so yeah. you've got an ecosystem here that doesn't naturally have a lot of grass in the understory mm. because of the shade yeah but there should be more than what's here yeah so it's trying <laughs> um you know you get some nice little rainforest grasses this is opus minus that's, oh, a, is that a that's a native rainforest grass, so here's a shade tolerant grass. Oh, right. And ideally that's what you'd want this whole area to be covered in. Right. Holding the ground together, providing that blanket on the ground, which is your best defence from weeds. And not just the mother of the million weeds, Hannah, the whole lot, you know, like if you can if you can cover the ground and not have all this bare dirt, you're gonna have less weeds, that's the reality of it. So. Mm. And all these things are easy to say, mm. but you can't actually make them happen, but you know, you, the dry is what causes a lot of this, obviously, you know, you've got, everything's died back. From a lot of dead trees, all you got to do is look up and you can see, yeah. so you know, there's so the many dead trees. It's opened up the canopy and, and that allows weeds in. It's removed the ground layer. So the weather's working against you. Mm -hmm. you know, yeah, the dry that we've got these days in these heat wave conditions is actually just setting everything back. And sadly, that's just making the conditions right for this sort of rubbish. Mm. What's um, this one again? It's, it, you said it's a native yeah, rainforest that's, grass. That's Oplus minus. Um, I think it's O-P-L-I-S. And then U-S, something like that. So if we pull the, um, the mineral plants out, how often do you have to come back and keep doing that? Constantly. Will you ever eradicate it? No, potentially oh. not. You just basically hold a line and stop it spreading further into the forest. Number yeah. one is never let the stuff flower. Never. Yeah. Never ever let it, you know, once it starts to flower is when you need to be there doing something about it. Um, because then you start to compound the, the, the plant the problem with seeds as well. Mm -hmm. Every year you let it flower and drop another lot of seeds on the ground. Um, to the best of my knowledge, those seeds are very long lived. Oh, and that's coming at winter. This yeah. yeah, they always they, they flower like clockwork in June. June. Yeah, every year. So hit them before June. So, yeah, and, and before they get a chance to mature. So when you mm -hmm. see them all with the pretty flowers on them, obviously it takes a while after that for them to progress to the point where they actually set seed and drop it on the ground. Um, but the main problem is the plantlets. So any big plant that's making lots of clones on the leaves is a problem. Mm -hmm. And then the flowers are also a problem. Mm -hmm. Mm. So, um, maybe, you know, that you need to maybe not concentrate so much on all those little tiny ones that are going to keep coming and concentrate on the bigger mature plants. To just initially in the first place stop the next flowering. Think about them like a privet tree that's setting seed, you know, like... I understand. There's no point chasing seedlings while you've got a plant there that's fruiting. Mm -hmm. uh, and these things are no different. While they're making lots of plantlets, they're the problem and, and the little tiny ones that are still getting there you've actually got a bit of time before mm. you need to get to them yeah peter said it's it's a matter of that continual coming back and rechecking and rechecking yep. and then you'll mm. beat it down 
and the, and the minute that you stop doing it, you know, for a few years, it'll probably be back like you never did anything. I don't think any of the people here are really going anywhere, so it's just sort of something we can do. That's you know, if everybody said yes yesterday, apart from one grumpy guy. Uh, everyone was, said they knew about it and they wanted to do something about it. When you say competition is better um, or helps, what kind of competition? Oh, this yeah. obviously is ground cover. Ground so cover. as much ground cover as you can get. Mm -hmm. um, can you get this seed yeah. somewhere? Like native no, no, plants? No, this is, this is the thing with you've got it. This is the thing with native seed and that sort of thing. It's not really commercially available. There's not enough money in it to make it any attractive for anyone to do it. Mm. And sadly, when they do like roadworks projects and then they they hydro mulch the batters and that sort of thing afterwards to stabilise them, they mm. usually use just exotic grasses because that's what they can get. Mm. Mm -hmm. um, okay. Yeah. Well, it's like all the rye grass you get in a you know, bag of seed. Mm. And the rye grass is not something that you want to have. No, well, um, sadly the grazing industry is still more or less planting whatever they like. Yeah. Um, I know where I live, um, just in the last 10 or 15 years, a really big grass has been introduced into the area and now it's down the creeks everywhere. It's called Soteria, it grows about three metres tall. And in any, it just gets shifted with floodwaters. Mm. And now it's just infesting all the creeks around the place. And you, honestly, you can walk into it and just disappear. That's how big it is. Wow. Where's that from? Um, is it from India? Is it the one that's like, like colored um, grass, elephant grass somewhere? The one they call elephant grass is a, um, it's gamba grass. It's a, it's an andropogen. So um, I'm pretty sure it is an African grass, that one. 